Hey, uh, how far are you in the free code camp in the JavaScript part? I've actually uh, completed the JavaScript part. All right. No, just wonder because uh, um, I I did I think all of it. Um, let me check. So that's why I thought you know I was like not there most of the time because you know I thought. Yeah. Nah, I I finished it, but I I finished it uh like a I want to say maybe a month ago, like that, something like that. So I it was a good idea for me to do this and uh, make sure I know the fundamentals because this has actually really helped solidify the information I think for me in my head. And wait, did you win over with the group? Or no, I, I I did it on my own before this class started. Okay. And can we uh, uh, finish it over the group, like? Because I know we were doing it like some of it, like. We barely, yeah, we barely finished. I think the job, like the first half of the the first section of the JavaScript basics. We were about to start okay. like ES six, which I think is only like the second section of JavaScript. Yeah, I I, I thought you. Uh, we started the ES6, but I'm not sure. We might have, yeah. And then I, I think one of the days, I think I started like going through the basics, like basic algorithms. And then I, on my own, had finished the four out of the five like advanced ones. The only thing I haven't done is the um, JavaScript algorithms and data structures projects. Yeah, yeah, I did. I've done... Four out of the, I think I'm the, the last, that catch which is the one's the last one I gotta do. Yeah, uh, I think I need help with a Roman numeral converter. But not, yeah, not, that, not, was, that was not an easy one. Yeah, that was some of those of are pretty tough. Yeah. I needed a lot of that stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's Definitely a lot of comparison. Like, needed a lot of Google for that. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of comparison, like creating an, another object or an array to compare to do the conversion. Wow. I like going through this MDN though, because it goes over uh, a few things that uh, Free Code Camp hasn't, and so I, I'm like learning new stuff each time we go through these. Like they'll have like a little note or something that I didn't know before. Right. So I, I really like the the these MDN documents. But all right, uh, is everyone back? Because Pat said he's going to be AFK, but he started the recording. So uh, I'm back. If everyone's here, I'll start. All right, functions, reusable blocks of code. Another essential concept in coding is functions, which allow you to store a piece of code that does a single task inside a defined block and then call that code whenever you need it using a single short command, rather than having to type out the same code multiple times. In this article, we'll explore fundamental concepts behind functions such as basic syntax, how to invoke and define them, scope and parameters, prerequisites, basic computer literacy, a basic understanding of HTML and CSS, and JavaScript first steps. The objective uh, to understand the fundamental concepts behind JavaScript functions. Where do I find functions? In JavaScript, you'll find functions everywhere. In fact, we've been using functions all the way through the course so far. We've just not been talking about them very much. Now is the time, however, for us to start talking about functions explicitly and really exploring their syntax. Pretty much any time you make use of a JavaScript structure that features a pair of parentheses and you're not using a common built-in language structure like a for loop, while, or do while loop, or if else statement, you are making use of a function. Built-in browser functions. We've made use of functions built into the browser a lot in this course. Every time we manipulated a text string, for example. So var my text equals I am a string. Uh, variable new string equals my text dot replace string with sausage. Console dot log new string. Uh, the replace string function takes a string, replaces one substring with another, and returns a new string with a replacement made. So this replace is the function or every time we manipulated an array. So variable my array is equal to I love chocolate frogs for separate strings. 
and the variable meta string equals my array dot join uh, at the spaces. So, or join them in add a space console dot log uh, made a string. The join function takes an array, joins all the array items together into a single string and returns this new string. So again, the join is a function. Or every time we generated a random number, variable my number equals math dot random. The random function generates a random number between zero and one and returns that number. So we were using a function. Note. Feel free to enter these lines into your browser JavaScript console to familiarize yourself with their functionality if needed. Uh, the JavaScript language has many built-in functions to allow you to do useful things without having to write all that code yourself. In fact, some of the code you are calling when you invoke a fancy word for run or execute, a built-in browser function couldn't be written in JavaScript. Many of these functions are calling parts of the background browser code, which is written largely in low-level system languages like C++, not web languages like JavaScript. Bear in mind that some built-in browser functions are not, are not part of the core JavaScript language. Some are defined as part of browser APIs, which build on top of the default language to provide even more functionality. Refer to this early section of our course for more descriptions. We'll look at using browser APIs in more detail in a later module. Functions versus methods. One thing we need to clear up before we move on, technically speaking, built-in browser functions are not functions, they are methods. This sounds a bit scary and confusing, but don't worry. The words function and method are largely interchangeable, at least for our purposes at this stage in your learning. The distinction is that methods are functions defined inside objects built-in browser functions methods and variables which are called properties are stored inside structured objects to make the code more efficient and easier to handle you don't need to learn about the inner workings of structured javascript objects yet you can wait until our later module with, that will teach you all about the inner workings of objects and how to create your own for now we just wanted to clear up any possible confusion of method versus function you're likely to meet both terms as you look at the available related resources across the web. Custom functions. You've also seen a lot of custom functions in this course so far. Functions defined in your code, not inside the browser. Anytime you saw a custom name with parentheses straight after it, you were using a custom function. In our random canvas circles HTML example, see also the full source code. From our loops article, we included a custom draw function that looked like this. So everything inside this code block is uh, the function inside these curly brackets. All right. This function draws 100 random circles inside a canvas element. Every time we want to do that, we can just invoke the function with this draw. Rather than having to write all that code out again every time we want to repeat it, and functions can contain whatever code you like, you can even call other functions from inside functions. The above function, for example, calls the random function three times, which is defined by the following code. Function random has an argument number, and then it returns math floor of the math random times the number. We needed this function because the browser's built-in math.random function only generates a random decimal number between zero and one. We wanted a random whole number between zero and a specified number. Uh, any questions or anything so far? Are we all all right? No, it's pretty straightforward. All right. Invoking functions. You are probably clear on this by now, but just in case, to actually use a function after it has been defined, you've got to run or invoke it. This is done by including the name of the function in the code somewhere followed by parentheses. So to call a function, you just you, uh, type out the name and then followed by parentheses. Anonymous functions. You may see functions defined and invoked in slightly different ways. So far, we have just created a function like so. Function, my function, which just uh, creates an alert that says hello. 
but you can also create a function that doesn't have a name. Function, uh, anonymous function, and then is also just creates an alert that says hello. This is called an anonymous function. It has no name. It also won't do anything on its own. You generally use an anonymous function along with an event handler. For example, the following would run the code inside the function whenever the associated button is clicked. Variable my button is equal to document dot query selector button. My button dot on click equals function alert uh, hello. So whenever you click on the button, it'll create an alert that says hello. The above example would require there to be a button element available on the page to select and click. You've already seen this structure a few times throughout the course, and you'll learn more about and see it in use in the next article. You can also assign an anonymous function to be the value of a variable. For example, uh, variable my greeting is equal to this anonymous function. This function uh, could now be invoked using my greeting, uh, followed by parentheses. So you invoke it like a regular function. This effectively gives the function a name. You can also assign the function to be the value of multiple variables. For example, variable another greeting equals this anonymous function. This function can now be invoked using either of my greeting or another greeting. But this would just be confusing, so don't do it. When creating functions, it is better to just stick to this form function my greeting uh, alert hello. So it's best to just give your function a name to begin with. You will mainly use anonymous functions to just run a load of code in response to an event firing, like a button being clicked using an event handler. Again, this looks something like this. My button dot on click equals the function you want to use. I can put as much code inside here as I want. Yeah, uh, function parameters. Some functions require parameters to be specified when you are invoking them. These are values that need to be included inside the function parentheses, which it needs to do its job properly. Note, parameters are, something, are sometimes called arguments, properties, or even attributes. That would get confusing to me because I feel like properties and attributes are used for like objects, but <laughs> anyway. As an example, the browser's built-in math.random function doesn't require any parameters. When called, it always returns a random number between zero and one. Variable my number equals math.random. The browser's built-in string replace function, however, needs two parameters, the substring to find in the main string and the substring to replace that string with. Variable my text equals I am a string. Variable new string equals my text.replace string with sausage. So new string is gonna be, I am a sausage. Note, when you need to specify multiple parameters, they are separated by commas. It should also be noted that sometimes parameters are optional. You don't have to specify them. If you don't, the function will generally adopt some kind of default behavior. As an example, the array join functions parameter is optional. Variable my array. So this is just the option from before, I think. Uh, but variable my array, I love chocolate frogs. Variable made a string equals my array dot join with a space. So it, it uh, creates this array into a string and adds a space in between each uh, array index. Uh, and then here, variable made a string equals my array dot join. So here it creates a string, but it doesn't add a space in between uh, the array. <laughs> If no parameter is included to specify a joining slash delimiting character, a comma is used by default. All right. Function scope and conflicts. Let's talk a bit about scope, a very important concept when dealing with functions. When you create a function, the variables and other things defined inside the function are inside their own separate scope, meaning that they are locked away in their own separate compartments unreachable from inside other functions or from code outside the functions. The top level outside all your functions is called the global scope. Values defined in the global scope are accessible from everywhere in the code. JavaScript is set up like this for various reasons, but mainly because of security and organization. 
Sometimes you don't want variables to be accessible from everywhere in the code. External scripts that you call in from elsewhere could start to mess with your code and cause problems because they happen to be using the same variable names as other parts of the code, causing conflicts. This might be done maliciously or just by accident. For example, say you have an HTML file that is calling in two external JavaScript files, and both of them have a variable and a function defined that use the same name. So here's the excerpt from the HTML document. You added the two different JavaScript uh, files. And then here you call the greeting function. This is inside, this is from the first JavaScript uh, file. The greeting says, uh, creates an alert that says hello plus whatever the name variable is, welcome to our company. In the second JavaScript file, uh, it also has a function called greeting and it creates, but this one creates a different alert that says our company is called plus uh, the whatever is inside the variable name. Both functions you want to call are called greeting, but you can only ever access the second.js uh, files greeting function. It is applied to the HTML later on in the source code. So it's variable and function overwrite the ones in first job in first.js. You can see this example running live on GitHub. See also the source code, if you click there. Keeping parts of your code locked away in functions avoids such problems and is considered best practice. It's a bit like a zoo. The lions, zebras, tigers, and penguins are kept in their own enclosures and only have access to the things inside their enclosures in the same manner as the function scopes. If they were able to get into other enclosures, problems would occur. At best, different animals would feel really uncomfortable inside unfamiliar habitats. A lion or tiger would feel terrible inside the penguin's watery, icy domain. At worst, the lions and tigers might try to eat the penguins. <laughs> the zookeeper is like the global scope. He or she has the keys to access every enclosure, to restock food, tend to sick animals, etc. All right, so active learning, playing with scope. Let's look at a real example to demonstrate scoping. First, make a local copy of our function.scope HTML example. This contains two functions called A and B and three variables X, Y, and Z, two of which are defined inside the functions and one in the global scope. It also contains a third function called output, which takes a single parameter and outputs it in a paragraph on the page. So, excuse me. From here. Scope example by body and x content will be values whatever the values all right looks like everything is good all right so open the example up in a browser and in your text editor open the javascript console in your browser developer to 
developer tools in the JavaScript console, enter the following command, output x, you should see the value of variable x output to the screen. So let's try it out. So it should equal one. Yep, value one. Now try entering the following in your console, output Y and output Z. Uh, now both of these should, shouldn't print out anything because since these variables are defined within the function, this function shouldn't have access to them, I think. But whoops. Yep, Y is not defined and then output Z, Z is not defined. Both of these should return an error along the lines of reference error, Y is not defined. Why is that? Because of function scope, Y and Z are locked inside the A and B functions, so output can't access them when called from the global scope. Yeah, so uh, this variable is declared in the global scope because it's not inside a function. These two variables are defined inside functions, so only these functions have access to the variable, only ha A has access to the variable Y, and only the function B has access to the uh, variable Z. So this function will only have access to variables defined within it in global variables. So that's why Y and Z are undefined. However, what about when it's called from inside another function? Try editing A and B so it looks like this. We call the output functions inside uh, the functions. So this should actually work because output will then have access to these functions because it's called inside. And then we probably have to call those functions. Save the code and reload it in your browser, then try calling the A and B functions from the JavaScript console. So let's call them down here, A and B, and see it prints out the values of the variables. So now since the output function is called inside these functions, it has access to the variables that are also inside that function. You should see that Y and Z values output in the page. This works fine as the output function is being called inside the other functions in the same scope as the variables it is printing are defined in, in each case. Output itself is available, is available from anywhere as it is defined in the global scope. Now try updating your code like this, X and then X. So we wanna call output X inside the functions A and B which should still work because X is a global variable. And see, uh, the values change to one and one, which is the value, value of variable X. Save and reload again, and try this again in your JavaScript console. Both the A and B call should output the value of X one. This works fine because even though the output calls are not in the same scope as X is defined in, X is a global variable, so it is available inside all code everywhere. Finally, try updating your code like this. We wanna output Z in function A and output Y in function B. And in this case, it shouldn't work because they don't have access to those variables because they're defined in a separate function which is why nothing shows up on the screen. Um, all right, save and reload again and try this again in your JavaScript console. This time the A and B calls will both return the annoying reference error Z is not defined error. This is because the output calls and, and the variables they are trying to print are not defined inside the same function scopes. The variables are effectively invisible to those function calls. 
no, the same scoping rules do not apply to loop, e.g., for uh, for loop and conditional blocks if uh, statements. They look very similar, but they are not the same thing. Take care not to get these confused. Right, because of blocks. All right. The reference error, X is not defined error, is one of the most common you'll encounter. If you get this error and you are sure that you have defined the variable in question, check what scope it is in. All right, so functions inside functions. Oh, sorry, did someone have a question? No I got a question about that. Um, so if you declare a variable in a for loop, is it considered global? Yes. Okay. Unless I think if you use the variable, if you create it with let, yeah. I think it's only accessible inside that loop then. Right. So the old trick was with ES5, you in strings before, like at the top of your JS file, you'd reuse use, there, it'd be a string called use strict, like use space strict. And so that would create the block scope, right? Within the for loops and ifs and all that. Um, but with ES6, yeah, now, but with the latest iteration of JavaScript, you just use let variable and it, and it creates, uh, it makes it only available in those curly braces. That's okay. So if you use var inside a loop or conditional, it's global. But if you use let inside a conditional uh, or a loop, uh, it's only in, available inside that loop or conditional block. Specifically, yeah. So if you try to access it later with like a console block, it won't be available. All right, so any other questions? Yeah, um, can you go over that just a little bit? Uh, I know that var is a uh, function scope and let and const is uh, block scope, right? Yeah, right, exactly. Now these rules, uh, for loop and if um, the for, so let me, let me read the same scoping rules and apply to loop. All right, so like const can never work in for loop, right? It Wait, say would, that. Oops. You mean like const the constant, like the declarations like const something equals. Yeah. Yeah, if uh, it was, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, if you were gonna use it for the initialization, it shouldn't work because constant uh, makes it so the value doesn't change, or at least it, I guess it would work, but you, sh you shouldn't use it because if you did, if we went back, uh, I'll just do it real, right here real quick. If you did for constant i is equal to zero, i is less than a random array length, and then did i plus plus, this wouldn't work because this constant makes i uh, stay at zero. So when it tries to, it'll, it won't ever loop to the next iteration. And then if you put, so if you switch it to let and anything within those like those curly braces, yeah. Like if you did const or let, it would only be available between those curly braces. Yeah. So here, variable i would be, you'd be able to actually, uh, if we console logged it here it would actually show up. It's not actually because I didn't define some of the stuff, but if we console logged it then out here, it wouldn't show up because it's outside of the loop scope. Oh, okay. Okay, I think I'm getting it. Because uh, for some reason, I thought like it says for loop is like the exception to the uh, block scope rule thing. Yeah, so they're, I think they're also counting and taking into account that like let and and like most of the stuff in here is like bar, right? I, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm assuming they're using a little bit of the syntax, but probably not as much as, you know, since, since it's not exactly like a full thing that you can use within the browser. Not everything, I guess. But. Yeah. So if, yeah, if we used var here, the console log would actually show up in both scenarios because when you create it with var, it has global scope. Yeah, so it escapes uh, the for loop. Well, var is like the only thing you can like trap 
uh, var is within functions, I believe, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. So basically what happened, like, so I don't want to get like too crazy with like how the JavaScript engine works, but so I'll, I'll say it like this as simply as I can. So like that whole code, right? That bar, like from line one to line 13 or 14, uh, when JavaScript, uh, like, oh, uh, on CodePen. Like oh, on sorry. Your, okay. Yeah. So that, that whole line, so like JavaScript engine is going to go, oh, okay, I'm going to make a variable of X and give it the value of the number one. And so when it hits that function loop or that function of A, it's just going to say, oh, it's a function. I'm going to call it A. And it's not actually going to go inside, right? Like, so that's why, that's why scope kind of is a, is a big deal. Because when, it, when the JavaScript engine, like, runs it, it doesn't, like, actually define bar Y equals 2. Like, it just says, oh, it's a function. It's called A. And then so when it actually gets called, like, by whatever, down here that's in line 16. It, yeah, that's when it goes back to that function line two and starts defining everything. So that's why you run into these issues where like why doesn't exist because JavaScript doesn't know why exists until you actually run the function. So the same thing applies to, to A, B, and I guess whatever it's called. Yeah, A, B, and output. Yeah. Yeah. So like that's in a nutshell is what happened why you're running into like why they're trying to explain block scope, right? Like, or the why they're trying to explain why some variables are available and some aren't, but you're right. Like to answer your question. Yeah. So var is the only thing like within a function where it, you find it in there and you can't exactly like console log Y or Z outside of it because it has that function scope. All right. Yeah. I think, yeah, Th that like, uh, the um the sentence kind of like messed me up, but I like, yeah, I, I think I think I already got it. Yeah. Okay. I know it's it's one of those things. Yeah, I know it's like those things like someone tells you like fifty times and like it makes sense to you, and then you see like one little thing, and you're like, wait a minute, that's that goes against everything that I just learned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Any other questions? I feel like these were really good questions. Really help clear some stuff up. All right, on to the next. Functions inside functions. Keep in mind that you can call a function from anywhere, even inside another function. This is often used as a way to keep code tidy. If you have a big complex function, it is easier to understand if you break it down into several subfunctions. Uh, so here we have function my big function, which is has a variable uh, my value declared, and then three sub functions within it called. And then here are the three uh, sub functions defined, sub function one, sub function two, sub function three, and each of them console log my value. Just make sure that values being used inside the function are properly in scope. The example above would throw an error, reference error, my value is not defined because although the my value variable is defined in the same scope as the function calls, it is not defined inside the function definitions. The actual code that is run when the functions are called to make this work, you'd have to pass the value into the function as a parameter like this. So here you have my big function and my value and they actually initialize it now to equal one. And then here they actually provide it as an argument, uh, my value. And then, so, that's the difference they is that now the sub functions require a parameter and you pass uh, my value as the parameter when you calling the functions all right so in conclusion this article has explored the fundamental concepts behind functions paving the way for the next one in which we get practical and take you through the steps to building up your own custom function all right any questions about uh Functions inside functions. All right, let's head to the next section. And if someone else, I guess, wants to take this, I'll stop sharing. Yeah, I can do it.